Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're gonna to be talking about men's coaching. We're gonna make this all about men. Ladies, you have so many episodes. We do so few episodes for the men, but this is going to be for the men in your life, whether you have a son, whether you have a brother, whether you have a husband, whether you have a father who's not showing up. This can be the answer to many of the unresolved issues that you might have been dealing with. We learn something as men as we grow up, and the truth is, many people just don't know how to be men. I talk about what makes men choose path of weaknesses before. I've talked about why men don't show up in relationships and marriage. There's a reason why there's an epidemic of single moms. There's an epidemic why there's fathers who don't want to be in the picture. And it all stems from manhood, not so much of the you know partner down below, but what happens in the mindset. The mindset is extremely powerful when it comes to men. And if you don't allow your mindset to form in a certain way, your mindset is going to be like mush. It can be something that can move a mountain, but it can barely move a pebble. So if we understand we have this type of power within us, maybe this ferocity, we should learn how to dive into it. However, many of us choose to run away from it because this person is like very scary. It's, it's, it's almost like an evilness, a demon, a, whatever you want to consider it. It is powerful. And with that power comes great responsibility. You know, I'm not Peter Parker's uh, grandpa or whatever, or uncle. That right there is just the truth of what it means to be a man. There's a reason why men are bigger. There's a reason why men are stronger. There's a reason why men should be out of women's sports. But we live in a very interesting place. Men don't have to choose to be men. Men can be weak and they can be stronger than women. Men can be a woman if they want to. All of this confusion that's happening, we have to really look at how is this going to affect the generation to come? How is this affect the generation that has been? We need to start to look at this because many men are having conversations. One of uh, the scary conversations people are having, especially fathers, are having with their sons that are like six, seven, maybe eight. They're asking them if they're like gay or something. They're like, are you gay? And the kid is like, no, because it's like we'll put drag queens in the school. We'll do all of this. And what's happening is that many men just don't know how to be men, so they're being influenced by other men into the wrong direction. So there's an aspect to finding the right pack, finding the right group of men that can lead you into something better. Because if we just allow the world to move us in a way, we're going to be moved off a deep end of complacency, of weakness, of inferiority, all because we chose not to find our, our true power. Maybe you're a superhero, you just don't know it yet. Maybe you can do amazing things in your life, you just don't know it yet. Maybe you can be capable of accomplishing great things in your life, you just don't believe it yet. So today we're going to be going on a journey. We're going to be talking with a men's and business coach, Pete Taylor. He's going to be helping us understand a little bit about his group and how he helps men become a man, step into manhood. Welcome to Taylor to Coaching the Session. Emotions, how are you doing today? Unrelented feelings Good, they have Mark, within yeah. them. So doing they can well. truly so shine as a man. Today I have you as so a to men's interview with Pete business myself. coach. And we're going to be diving into many different conversations today. It might be masculinity. It might be how to help men show up more in their life, to take action, to be the father they're supposed to be. I mean, there's just so many conversations when it comes to men showing up. And in our world today, many men, especially here in America, they choose to take the lesser road, the lesser path. They choose to not allow their manhood to speak for them. We're going to speak in volumes today. We're going to be learning about the work that you do. In your own words, tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help them. Yeah, sure. So it's Pete Taylor. The last two years, I have been in this men's workspace. And if you'd said two years ago, Pete, hey, you're going to be in men's work, I would have said, what the frick is that? It sounds like there's going to be a bunch of guys in the woods, bashing drums, singing Kumbaya, and, and all hugging each other. 
And that's probably what it sounds like. And that's probably what I would have thought it would have been a couple of years ago, but it's far from that. And it's the really the path of self-development for a man. And it's the path that I've been on for a long time as a consumer, but only the last couple of years as a actual producer for other people. Have you ever read the book Raising a Modern Day Knight? No, I've not. Okay. It's a book that talks about how men step into manhood. We won't go into the book since you don't know it, but we'll just ask you the general question. What makes a man a man? Interesting question. And I think, and you alluded to this at the start of the podcast there, there's lots of men in today's world that don't really step into being a man. And I think for a lot of guys, number one, it can be confusing for what a man is, especially in society. There's lots of different opinions on this. But the second thing is, I think it's very easy for guys to be lazy. It's extremely easy in today's society to not do a lot and rely on the support of governments and society and so forth, just to keep guys ticking along. And I think with, with the uprise of things like social media, things like gaming, things like porn, it's that they're, they're all things that numb men and make it easy for them to be I don't know, sedated and, and lazy. I think which is why there's the rise of the likes of guys like Andrew Tate and, and Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson and and so forth, because these are guys that are talking out and are very, very opinionated. And there's lots of guys that will, will want to follow that because they're lacking leadership from elsewhere. When we look at it that way, right, there's some clear signs that can help men be men. But we do have to even go a little bit further, right? There's a difference between when you're growing up, are you a man yet? Or are you just a boy still? From what age? Is a man made? Is it something they fall into by circumstance? Is it something they have to build into? Is it something that comes like a rite of passage, which you talk about in the modern day night? What is that for men today? Because it doesn't seem like we have anything if we have anything. Yeah, I can relate to this massively. It got to my 30s. I'm running my own business. I've got a team of 20 people. I've got I've got a big house in the countryside. I've got the I've got a model wife. I've got the, the cars and the watches and, and, and all sorts of things. And I recall this. I was very much like, do you know what? I am just a boy in a man's body. There's never, ever been like this, like rite of passage, like the slaughtering of the lamb or, or the knighthood or whatever that like, you are now a man. And I think for a lot of guys, it's going through certain hardships to be able to create the man. But also it's, it's having role models around you that can guide and that can mentor and that can push and that can challenge and that can ultimately just keep you consistently out of your comfort zone. Because I think like just going back onto what we were saying earlier about a lot of guys maybe taking the lazy route because it's an easier route, but the lazy route ultimately leads us into forms of depression and anxiety and not in good places because us as humans and especially us as men like we're goal-driven animals and we thrive and flourish when we're moving forward and we're going after something but every time we make the easy choice and the comfortable decision ultimately the safe choice more often than not it's what our brain wants us to do right it's just to keep us safe right stay safe don't make that hard decision we can just keep stepping back, stepping back, stepping back. And, and over time, these like little micro decisions of making an easy choice will lead us into bad places. Whereas the other end of the spectrum, when we're being pushed forward and we're to challenge and encourage to do the hard things, even as simple as getting up early and going to the gym is hard and it's painful. But that leads us to building discipline and that leads us to building better bodies. It leads us to having more energy. That then in turn goes us into being better fathers and, and leaders and husbands and so on. But it's for us to get there, it's, we have to do some painful work. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. You and I are just trying to dive deep into this conversation. And you said the key point early on, and we're going to get to it in a bit. I know the audience is trying to just digest this because it is something that if we went into the conversation of well, we can have the support groups and things like that. It's going to be hard for them to fathom. Well, like, why do we even need to have these support groups? Why do we even need to be emotional with other men, right? Build that bond with other men, the camaraderie. We have lost that, but there's a reason why we lost that. We're just getting into that aspect, right? You said many words, safe, comfortable, lazy. They're all really synonyms for men, right? To not take action, right? To take the lesser road, as you were saying. 
we as men, typically when, when we're just looking at the direct definition for it, we love action. We love missions. We love purpose. We need some meaning in our life. And when we don't have that, that's when we take those lesser options. We run away from fatherhood. We run away from making a good amount of money or a career that has some type of meaning to us, not just a paycheck. We have to look at the inception of, well, where does this all come in? We look at the school system here in America. You can see it very clearly. Boys are not allowed to be boys. Boys are not said to be rambunctious. Don't hit, don't fight, don't yell, just scream. Just sit down, be quiet, and do the best you can. Okay? Well, boys are just naturally more adventurous. All right? I have a son. My sister, she has a daughter. They're wildly different. And my son is like, he's crazy. He's like a Tarzan baby. And it's just like, okay, great. This is cool. But if I put him in the school, he would become docile. He would basically be uh, bred as a sheep. Okay, well, let's take away his dominance. Let's take away his curiosity. Let's take away his ferocity. And I mean, you might not see it unless you are a teacher. I was a teacher for five years. I've been in the schools for quite a bit. 2009 was when I first got into the schools, left in 2016. So you can see how long I was in the schools. I saw what happened with uh, young boys, with children, how they grew up. And it is a very interesting conversation now that you can see what's happening in the schools and how it's correlating to the real world. And then you have to wonder, like, if this is happening, why are we allowing people just to go down this path of weakness when they can be bred into a mindset of being strong? Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. And there's other facets to this. I can speak to this from, so my parents got divorced when I was 13, which is, is a pivotal age for any young boy. And a couple of years after some parents got divorced and I predominantly then lived with my mum. I see my dad once a week. And then a couple of years after that, my dad moved away to a different country. I, was, I didn't see my dad too often, a few times a year, predominantly then raised by my mother. I love my mother. She done an amazing job. She's an amazing woman. But she carried on the burden of raising two young boys as I have a younger brother. And my mum is extremely feminine. And, and I've picked up all of her amazing feminine traits. Right. She's very, very giving, very loving. But in me being raised by my mother, I kind of missed out on a, on a lot of those real strong, hard masculine traits that a young boy should really embody. And there's a lot of that. Like there's a lot of absent father. And it doesn't even have to be parents are separated. Mother and father are separated. It might be that the dad's at work like a lot. And then when dad comes home, he's absent. He might be there physically, but he's tired and, and low on energy and just wants to chill by watch a little bit of TV and just relax before he goes again, work the next day. And there's two types of absent father. There's, there's literally there's a physical absence and there's also the, well, he's there, but he's not there. And there's a lot of that. And that then, like, especially in today's world with when you've got so much more access to things that will numb you, like I said earlier, like, like porn, like social media, your dad coming in from work. He's numbing, watching TV, watching social media, then got young boys on their phones, numbing, watching social media, gaming, maybe even watching porn. Like it was a real problem for a lot of young guys. I know when I was between the ages of 13 to, to 18, actually accessing pornography was difficult, really difficult. I remember trying my hardest. We had the old like internet dial up connection. So you got to wait 10 minutes for the internet to come on. Then when it did come on, it's so slow. But actually, but then there was nothing really on, there was no real like porn websites or anything like that. Like the closer we would get to it would be a magazine that we might be lucky enough to find, right? A top shelf magazine. But nowadays it's extremely accessible. It's very, very accessible. It's, it's at the click of a button and it can be extremely discreet. You put in some headphones and then you're away. I think for a lot of young boys, it can be very, very consuming, very, very numbing, very, very dangerous for, for young men growing up in society. And the point I want to harp on here is you had a great mom and moms, they do their best for their kids. I know it's difficult, right? There's an epidemic of broken households, right? All over the world. When that boy's growing up, they know what they grew up in, right? Their circumstance. When they finally become 
of age 18, 19, 20, right around there. You can go off to war when you're, I believe you can sign up when you're 16, if you have a parent's permission and you can do it 18 without a parent's permission, right? Before you can have a legal drink, before you can smoke, but you can go off and you can go find some meaning, hopefully. Those men are looking for a meaning, right? They might've had broken households. They might've had that absent father that you spoke of. But they're trying to figure out, well, who can I surround myself with? So they find typically a group of men. As you said early on, right, we have groups of men that come together. And it's not so much of talking about our feelings and crying on other people's shoulders. It's about confiding in other men, speaking their truth, because they might realize that their truth is someone else's truth, similar to how you were growing up. You had a single mom, maybe someone else had a single mom or an absent father or no father at all. In our community, fathers are a dime a dozen, it seems like. But that is reality. When men are finally called to be men, they don't show up. They're afraid to answer the call because they don't know how. They were never taught. They were never trained. They were always told to not be men, to be this lesser version of a person, to be quiet, to be calm, to tiptoe in life. How can we? as men, when we go into those groups, help men almost become like similar to what women do with each other, become empowered once more. Women have actually absolutely had their open moment. And it's clear, like ladies will verbalize everything they're feeling. They'll tell their neighbor and they'll tell their hairdresser and they'll tell their, their beautician. And it's great. Like it's a, it's like verbalizing that as a form of therapy. It's like it's getting things off your chest and it's, and it's talking about it. It's the opposite for guys. Guys were like, no, I'll keep it to my chest, but I'll put it on my shoulders. I'll suppress that. And that is a problem. And I'm not, you know, I'm not suggesting you go out and you tell every man and their dog the, all your problems, but having a, a strong group of guys you can have a chat with when shit's hitting the fan and you've got some stuff on your chest that you need to get off. It's really, really important. And not going back and, and doing that maybe with your partner, doing that with a, with a group of guys. And then maybe we, you come back and you talk to your wife, but you've got a plan. You've got, you know, I've, I've talked to the guys and I've voiced all my shit and I've, actually, I've got a plan for what we're going to do next. Don't, don't worry, I've got, I've got this. That's like, that's super, super powerful. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of drinking alcohol. I stopped drinking alcohol six years ago. But what I am a fan of is guys getting together, even if it is over a, a couple of drinks, and, and like just because it's it's the camaraderie it's the, it's just a, a group of guys getting together and just talking and sometimes it is very like when it's over a few drinks it is very surface level it is very uh, what's the football score what's the soccer score whatever that is it's very surface level but i think that there's there's a massive therapeutic element to that for guys which is massively important guys need their packs you know this right the the lone wolf in the woods was the lone wolf do he dies he's alone he hasn't got a pack and like the strongest teams in the world like the navy seals they're in the team and i think many uh, i've seen this like i have thousands of guys in our communities i personally coach hundreds of guys and one like key denominator for a lot of these men is they used to pride themselves on being lone wolves it's like no i've got this i can figure it out on my own i know the answers i'm a fixer i'm a how-to guy i'm a problem solver I don't, I'll figure this out on my own. And it's a pot. I can tell you that it's, 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 it's not the right way. That was me. It was me all over. All right. That was, that was me during growing my previous business. And in the end, after six years, I had this business breakdown where I left my own company because I was just trying to solve everything on my own. I didn't have like a strong pack around me. And if you haven't got that pack, I would absolutely go searching for it. Look for places where there is growth. We're not like down the local club or bar. That's not necessarily the right place to go, but maybe the local gym or the local boxing club or like jujitsu MMA sort of like that. Cause the guys in there, they're not necessarily like I go to a boxing club and I remember when I first walked in there, I was like, oh, this is intimidating. I'm like, I'm an old, I'm an office, but I used to be an office boy, right? It used to be behind a desk and it was intimidating walking into a boxing club, but they're all like the super cool guys. They're, they're not all rough. They're all there for, for their growth. They're actually purposely every week and every day they go there, putting themselves in uncomfortable positions and putting themselves in some pain. And a lot of growth comes from that. I think for guys that, that are missing that, I would, I'd go and find it. Like I had to create that. The project that we run, Heroic Man, that only existed because we created it. 
because I couldn't find what I was looking for. I was like, right, okay, I'm going to put a group of guys together that I want to talk to and we talk about anything. I, I, I remember this. Like, the first group of guys I had together, there were six of us. I just had my baby boy, Leo. Leo was probably four months, four or five months at the time. And I was fucking worried because I didn't have connection with him. I'm like, Denise, my, my partner, she's like, just loves him so much and just like can't take her hands off of him and just and I'm like oh this just feels like there's just this thing in the house and it was really like it was messing with my head mad messing with my head because for as long as I can remember I wanted to be a dad I was like it was my biggest like dream I want to be a dad I can't wait to be a dad finally became a dad got my little mini me and then I'm like I've just uh, I've got no connection to him and I was like, who do I talk to? Like, where do I go with this? Do I put it on some forums online? Like, who do you talk to about this? But fortunately, I had this little group of guys that I'd put together. They're all high-level men. None of them are idiots. And I raised it. And one of the other guys was like, oh, Pete, yeah. I remember when I had my first boy, I had exactly the same thing. A few of the other guys, they were like, no, I actually didn't feel that. But oh, like everyone had like good input because I was just open and honest. I'm like, guys, this is how I'm feeling right now. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm like, help felt good to get that off my chest and, and when there was another guy who was able to articulate that he'd gone through something similar i'm like oh mate good i'm not the only one now i don't feel so bad now i know that it's in time as long as i keep showing up with leo my boy and i keep present with him and now like leo's two and a half we like we've got the best relationship like we're best friends it's amazing but having that group of guys who like got me through a period where i was worrying about it and if i didn't have that what I've done, bottled it up, suppressed it, waking up at two in the morning, thinking about it, unhealthy. There was a video of Simon Sinek. He was told explaining what makes a leader. And he had a meeting, I guess, with some Navy SEALs. And he asked them just a legit question. What makes a leader? And they said, OK, well, this is what makes a leader. He thought it was could be the most badass person, the person who can kill the most people, the person who can run the fastest and do the most, but it wasn't that person. That person was actually not a good leader. The person who could make the best leader after he spoke with them and they spoke was someone that they could trust, someone that was going to be consistent. Those made the best leaders on the Navy SEALs team, not the most badass person, the person who was most consistent, the person who can be trusted. And as you said, you showed up, right? That's consistency for that child, right? You're being there. Sometimes fail to understand that trust has to be made in every relationship. Because if you don't have trust, you're truly not going to open up. Typically, you're not going to just open up to the stranger on the street. And even in your men's group, initially, you might be a little bit more reserved until you know you can trust the individual. And once you start to build that trust, then you can start to open up not so much of, I'm going to tell you everything that's wrong with me, but beginning to unravel, peel back the onion or unravel the yarn, whatever you want to uh, think of it as. But building trust is a key component to men coming together in unity. How do you help men build trust with each other, with a community, with themselves? We're fortunate in the, the community that we built. We don't let anyone in that we don't want in. We're very selective that way. And so we cultivate it and find dickheads in the group. Then we, we are very, we'll, we just remove them. And we're very, very boundary with that. If these are the rules of being in the group. If you break them, you're out. That's it. You make an agreement when you come in, like the agreement is your word. And if you break your word, then you're less of a man. And so you're out. And one of the biggest things that I'll say to guys when they come in, because a lot of guys are nervous. There's some really high level guys that will come in they've achieved like amazing heights and maybe business, but they're nervous to get around other guys that may have achieved similar or just like that all they've achieved other things in their life. My advice is always the same and to be active, not passive. And like, I just actively don't sit on the sidelines and like be active and be very conscious of that. And the times that you don't want to show up is the times that you need to show up. When that voice in your head, I call it the inner enemy, or we also call it part X, like as in the, the, the letter X, like part X. This is like your self-saboteur, the, 
a voice in your head that's there to fuck you up. When that voice comes in and says, hey, Mike, do you just stay on the sidelines, buddy. You know, you don't know these group of guys. That don't say anything to them. Just listen in and just like that. He's trying to keep you safe. Just remember, he's trying to, he's like, this is your enemy. He's trying to keep you safe. And this is like a big training that we'll get guys to go through is for them to be aware of the inner enemy. He pops up all the freaking time. He's, he, he will never go. He is always there. He pops up when you're supposed to get up at five in the morning to go to the gym. And he tells you not. He tells you to stay in bed. It's nice and warm in here. Let's have another lie in. It'll also pop up when it's time to have the hard conversation with someone. He said, I don't have the hard conversation. We'll have it another day. It'd be easier if we do it next week. It'll also pop up when it's time for you to go, do you know what? I'm going to go down and join that boxing gym or that jujitsu gym. I'm going to go and do it. And then he puts you off doing it. He's like, ah, no, don't do it next week. You're not ready yet. Every time that he's popping up, the more that you can become aware of that, the more that you know that it's your signal to push into the discomfort. And so even if it's a man who joins our group and then first day he's coming in and he just introduces himself, he's like, hey, I'm Mike, this is what I do, here for the ride, this is what I want to achieve. And, and I find that when guys do that, there's like little weight off your shoulder. And then because the community that we've cultivated, and you'll find this in many, you'll find this pretty much everywhere, they'll welcome you. Just like the boxing gym I went to, I was intimidated when I went in there. I'm like, oh my God. And then the guy who, who owns it, Ricky, he's like, oh, Pete, nice to meet you. Good to have you in. Arm around me. I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Hi, guys. I'm Pete. Da, 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 da. And then that's it. You're welcomed in. It's, it's always those initial steps that you force yourself to take. It's never as hard as you think it's going to be. My last question is what is a non negotiable for a man? A non negotiable for a man, self restraint. For me, self-restraint, self-control is if you cultivate that as a value and you cultivate that as something that you embody and that you pride yourself on, there's, so you can go very far because it's difficult. It's extremely difficult, self-restraint. And embodying that, you cultivate self-discipline. Self-discipline is one of the most powerful skill sets that you can have as a man, right? But that urge in the middle of the day to go and jerk off the porn, like that urge to quickly have a scan of Instagram and then you see a nice looking lady on there and I know you've got a partner, but it doesn't really matter if you just double tack and, and, get, and give her a like, it doesn't really matter. That's self-restraint not to do that. That's self-restraint not to go up at that, to not get sucked into that when you should be doing a sales call or you should be spending time maybe with your family. That self-restraint not to give in to the urge to go and to go and jerk off or to go to go and watch porn or to go and eat the last cookie in the cookie jar at 11 o'clock at night which is a biggie right we all have it our willpower is lesser during the late stages of the day feeling hungry there's a lot of cookies in there i'm going to eat them but you know that that's not good for your digestion you know that's not going to do you any favors to go to sleep you know it's going to do no favors for your body it's just a multitude worse a night's sleep i regret that i'm so you're now living in regret for the end of the day and then you feel like you're not as optimal the next day, all because of some cookies. It's the same with anything else. Like if there's anything, it, like I use um, regret as like a barometer. It's like if I regret something, it can be small or big, just consciously, if I know right here, I shouldn't have said what I said. I shouldn't have said it in that way to that person. I regret that. Okay, that's, do you know what? That's my work on. And the next time that event happens and I respond in that way to that person, I remember that I regretted that and my self-restraint now comes in. I'm like, right, don't do that again, Pete, because you regretted that last time, speak in a different way. And you can put that to, to any walk. You no, know, that's a good one to have. I think our conversation, it wasn't surface level, but it was a good entry point for, I think, many guys to begin to ask questions to the right people, right? You know, that men's group that you're in, I'm sure they're going to be curious about it. They're going to want to understand, well, where did they go wrong? And the reality is they didn't do anything wrong. It's just that they have to find out what is the missing piece of the puzzle. Sometimes they have feelings that they have been keeping in remission. They have feelings that they are afraid to show other people when those feelings can make them stronger in a sense, right? So there's just so much. As we begin to wrap up, I would love to get some final words from you. And then the police have the audience where they can find you. Absolutely. Just going back onto self-restraint and self-discipline. Like one of the quickest things for, for men to do to just to just to elevate is to look after their body, look after what they put into their body and look after, look after how they exert their body. 
so physical exercise and on what you put in so what you eat i honestly find it's like with the guys that we work with and some of these guys are they're, they're already fit they already do a lot of things but if you just dial that in a little bit and maybe even just get them to to track their macros even if they don't need to track their macros but it's just the form of them having to go through a discipline and a structure and like i find that it accelerates men they get up a little bit earlier if they look after their health like first thing in the morning if they cut out the vices that they know consciously are playing on their mind whether it's social media whether it's watching tv whether it's drink whether it's drugs whether it's porn whatever that looks like if they start to cut out those vices things get life gets a lot better very very simple maybe hard to do they're simple things but they're hard to do and that's the beauty of it is that when we do hard things we grow that's my final words i think if you if you guys want to look us up it's a heroicman.com or me personally it's pete underscore taylor on instagram perfect and i'll definitely make it easy for everyone all those links are going to be in, in the description box below people can easily find you and then begin to learn more about the work that you're doing because the work that you're doing is something that the world needs right now it is something that many men are lacking and they are interested in it's not something that they're afraid to embark on it's just something that they have not been guided to or something that they have not been introduced basically this episode is going to be an introduction for them to finally understand all their feelings all their emotions that they've been hiding who they can be and then the steps to that person i want to thank you so much pete for coming on spending a little bit of time with us today and talking about your work all right everyone i'd like to thank you for watching that interview with pete taylor and myself what went on in that episode was many good conversations many understandings but even that, I felt like it was still a little bit on the surface. We could have went so much deeper. I want people to understand that we didn't truly go too deep, even though we did touch on some deep topics. It's almost like if you give someone an opportunity to do something new, you're going to start them off on maybe step one, level one, right? You're not going to say, okay, well, let's start level 90. Let's do it, right? If I have people who come to me for fitness, I'm not going to say, well, let's go on the treadmill or run at 13 speed and let's do it for an hour. That's not where they are. When someone's a little bit timid, when someone's a little bit curious, maybe even afraid, you have to approach it in a way that's going to help them with their mindset because you can turn people very easily off when you are very dominant and maybe authoritative. It could be scary right the competitive nature of men naturally where you're just like whoa i don't know about this but the moment you get acclimated right you get used to it you're like oh this is not so bad whether you think of it as going into a pool you're getting your feet wet oh the water's cold and eventually you get used to it you acclimate to it but there is a process to it we want to acclimate men into understanding that they can become better than what they are there are many episodes I have on the podcast, one being the Spartan warrior mindset. We talk about that emotional intelligence. We talk about that. A recent episode was effective parenting. We talk about that. And I don't necessarily make it all about men all the time. It could be a generalization. The Spartan warrior was more about men. We look at what truly makes man. I spoke about the book, The Modern Day Knight, Raising a Modern Day Knight. It is almost a religious book in a sense, but they have many key aspects to that raising of a man that is true even in our world today, even if you take out the religion aspect. However, there is some belief that you need to have a power greater than yourself to believe in in order to be a true natured masculine male. The reason is, if you feel like you are omnipotent, then your demise is going to be inevitable. All right, Alexander the Great, these great men, right? They get greedy, okay? Greed can be the creator and it can be the destructor of great things in your life. You can have a bunch of money, you can accumulate a bunch of money, but you can also lose it all because of greed. So we can look at how one type of emotion can cause us so much detriment. And we have to learn how to control our emotions. So we talk about it, or I've talked about it on the podcast, Emotional Intelligence Zero to Six. Okay. We talked about raising 
children. Whose role is that? If we look at the episode of the Spartan mindset, encourage you to watch that episode. We talk about the mindset of young men. From zero to six, zero to seven, the boys are with the mom. The boys are getting all the love they need, all the care they need, all the kisses, all the hugs, all the band aids, whatever. The father's there, right? He's that image that the boy can look up at, might pick up the boy, but not so much of, I'm going to teach you how to be a man yet. But at the age of seven, the father is like, You're coming with me. It's time to be a man, no longer a boy. In our culture today, Around 13 to 15, boys typically stumble into being a man or learning how not to be a boy and to be more of a man. Though that aspect is something that has not been fine-tuned yet in our culture, we can do it as individuals. So for example, if you're a father, you can do this with your son. You don't have to have a community, a society do it all together. You can do it yourself. You can join a men's group like what Pete has. You can do it there. But when we're looking at the aspect of what makes a man a man, we had an episode, group two, group two of the podcast, four African-American men talking about what it is to be a man. Ralph Grace Jr., he talked about in order to be a man, you have to be a male, right? So you just can't be a man if you are not a male. You have to be biological male great episode. Watch that. There's just so much content to help men understand that they can be men. Then we get into the rite of passage, right? There is necessarily none, but we create that. Maybe you decide to be a fighter. As Pete was saying, he went into the boxing gym. You go there for growth, not only learn a skill, but to become better. And as you grow, you become more confident. You might be able to beat people in the gym, But that confidence doesn't necessarily come with much ego when you're in that gym with people you train with. Yes, you might not like someone in the gym, you want to knock their head off, but you learn how to harness that power. One of the things I believe every man should understand and know in practice is they should know how to control their actions. Pete said, you know, his non-negotiable is self-restraint. And I believe this is very much in line to what I believe with the action. We can become more present in those moments. Most people don't want to join a fighting gym. Most people don't want to play sport. Most people don't want to take action in their day. They want to play video games. They want to watch their porn. They want to be docile. They want to be complacent. They want to be comfortable. Comfort is going to be the killer of many men's dreams, but yet many men don't realize that their dreams are being foregoed because they choose to not be who they are or who they're supposed to be. But who a man should be is a journey that that man has to be on, depending on their upbringing, depending on their mother and their father and their circumstance. They're going to turn out to be a certain way. There is no right way to be a man. There is no right way for them to step into manhood. There's going to be their journey. And every male should go on that journey at some point in their life. Because right now in our society, I was throwing Pete a Hail Mary. I say, all right, go long, Pete, go long. And he didn't get it. We have an epidemic in our society right now where men are being targeted, men are being attacked, men are being portrayed as weaker than the rest. It is a big issue. We have drag queen story times, as I was talking about. Our schools are not built for men, are not built for boys, and we are doing them a huge injustice. So as men or as fathers, you have to understand that if you put your child in school, you give them something else, okay, that is going to teach them growth and control. I mean, I can go all day on this aspect, on this topic, because it is a big one. I'll probably do a whole episode on this. Because it is something that we need to learn how to step into, recognize, and not so much become more passive or say, well, this is just how it is, or we just fall into circumstance, or we just fall into this mundane type of society because men don't want to show up. Because if we look at the jobs and just the type of jobs that build infrastructure, right? The construction jobs, the road jobs, the plumbing jobs, the electrical jobs. 98%, some places in the world, it might be 90, 
but that's still a significant number. The world is built by men. So if men are not showing up, if men want to stay at home all day and play video games, who's going to build the world? Who's going to make everything run? There is a sense that comes from men that we need a mission, we need a purpose, we need passion. We talk about it. Many people don't want to say their piece. Many people are going to bite their tongue before they let people know what they truly feel. There's a sense of being kind. There's a sense of being humble. There's a sense of avoiding ego. But there can be a true power that comes when you face a fear, when you face a moment that you would have ran away from. There is a power when you decide to learn more about what being a man is. And if you are a person who's confused right now, if you're a person who might not be on the path of what true masculinity is, I encourage you to check out Pete. All his links, again, are going to be in the description box below. Check us out at Reverend Concepts. What we do is we help people with mindset. We give you what you need in order to change and evolve into the person that you're trying to be. My goal, my, my purpose is not to change you into someone you're not. If you don't feel like you're this person, I'm not going to change you into that person. And I believe Pete's the same. He has rules. He has guidelines. He has structures he's going to follow, I'm sure. We want to help you understand yourself. But when you're looking for men's groups or mastermind groups or gyms, you have to find some place you resonate with. Some places might be, you know, very much gun ho Some places might be a little bit more kind. You can figure out whichever temperament you want. You can go on all levels of extreme, easy to extreme, okay? You choose. So find the group that works for you. I encourage every male to get a life coach at some point, a men's coach, a relationship coach, especially if you haven't had a father who is present or a father at all. We all need a father figure. I often say, regardless if you like it or not, a man is going to look for another man to emulate whether good or bad, at some age, a man is going to look for another man to emulate. So that means your gangbangers in Chicago, when they don't have fathers because the fathers want to leave, they look for the drug dealers that take care of them, that give them a little money and put it in their pocket. They emulate it. We don't have to be that. We don't have to go down that path. That extreme is beyond us. We can be so much better. We can be so much more proactive in how we raise our young generation of men. Share this episode out with the men in your life, any age group, any bracket, so they can learn just what it is for them to finally step into the nature that they might be missing in their life. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coachingincession at gmail.com, and I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.